Hey guys, welcome to the Dino November edition of Stitching Stories. We are going to be doing a dinosaur project on plastic canvas. And plastic canvas is a little bit different than sewing with regular fabric. We're going to be doing something today that's a decorative stitch called needlepoint. And we are going to make some dinosaur magnets. And this is one that I made ahead of time. You can see it's a Tyrannosaurus. And this is the pattern that I use. Now you guys can see normally our patterns are the exact same size and shape as what we're making. But this time it's just the same shape, not the same size. And that's because the size of the pattern is based on the squares of whatever you make it on. If I had made it on smaller graph paper, it would have been smaller. Each square of graph paper equates to one square on our plastic canvas. And for needlepoint, we always do a diagonal to the right stitch. So these diagonal lines where it's pencil are the diagonal in the color for our dinosaur. And these, where you see straight lines, it's because we're just going to be wrapping around the edges to create the grass for the Tyrannosaurus Rex. Now the one I'm actually doing today is going to be a Triceratops. And all I did was pencil in the stitches for the grass. Now there's more grass on this one, so there are some diagonal stitches where I have intersections and there are some straight stitches around the edge. I didn't fill in all of the dinosaur because I thought it would be very confusing. All we will need today is our plastic canvas and a cut out dinosaur shape. I'm going to be using a tapestry needle. So you can use a tapestry needle or if you have a plastic yarn needle, most of you probably do because you've done crafts at the library, these yarn needles will work. Mine has gotten a little bit worse for wear and I like using my tapestry needle. There's not a sharp point on this because we don't have to go through any fabric. We're going through the holes in the plastic canvas. It already has holes in it so we don't have to punch any holes. I'm going to leave my pattern up here and I'm following along just for color. So I cut a comfortable length of yarn and I'm going to come up this last one here on the end. Oops. Try that without not taking the yarn all the way out. And I'm going to leave a tail on the back and pinch it with my finger. The cool thing is this, you can see it through the plastic canvas, you can see what I'm doing. And see along the bottom? We're wrapping around the bottom, all the way across. So I'm wrapping around it and going up. And then I'm gonna go around the next one and up. And you can just squish the yarn to make it go where you want it to go. It might be a little bit wiggly at first. Our goal is we don't want any of the plastic canvas to show because we are making a dinosaur magnet, not a plastic canvas magnet. And if it loops around, just pick it up. So I'm gonna go all the way down the row, just going around the end, and then I will show you how to do the diagonal stitches that we are going to do on the way back. All right, here we are at the other end. We're going to go around the bottom. Then I'm going to come back in the same one. And I'm going to go... See, if I just go around here, then I leave a corner open, which I'm going to do for the first time. And if you're okay with that, you can leave it that way. I kind of don't like that, so I'm going to go around again and put the yarn right over that corner and come up. And then I'm going to do the same thing on this corner. I'm going to go over the top first and then back around to cover the corner. 
And if your yarn doesn't want to cover the corner, before you pull it tight, just kind of like move it around with your fingers. There we go. Now, now I've got one more that I'm going around. Now we've finally gotten a point where, wait a minute, there's a, there's a diagonal there. And I'm going to go around and up in this one. But instead of just going up like that, I'm going to go diagonal and in next to it. And then again, I'm going to go diagonal. Since I'm moving to the left, I'm going down and to the left. So I'm going in the one above it and down to the one next to it to the left. Coming up above it and down next to it. And when I say it, I'm talking about the stitch that I just did. And I'm going to do that all the way across and we will have created our grasp. But wait, there's that open spot in the middle. And there are those two straight dashes. So this time when I come up on this one, if I keep going, I'll have this little bar of plastic showing. And I don't want to just show that between the legs of my dinosaur. So I'm going to do a wrap around the top and then do my diagonal. And I'm going to do the same thing again. Wrap around the top. And I still have that piece in the middle, so I'm just going to do it again. Just to get an extra loop in there. Cover that piece of plastic. just because I'm picky. If you're not picky and you don't mind it there, probably nobody else will notice it. Right. And same thing as between the legs. I'm gonna wrap around the bar of plastic. And then do a diagonal. bar of plastic and same as before because I don't like that plastic showing I'm gonna do an extra one I'm turn it upside down so you guys can see what I'm doing get my thumb out of the way Alright, now I don't have any square up here to do a diagonal, so it's just the same as we were doing before, wrapping around the top. And wrapping around the top. And I'm going to wrap around the end. And I'll just like the other end, I don't like those corners showing. So I'm going to do an extra direction. Yeah, that corner is pretty covered up. Alright, so there is the grass knot. We're going to flip over to the back side. You'll see a little bit more of the canvas is showing here. That's how we know it's the back side. And uh, I'm going to take my tapestry needle and just so you guys can see, I'm going to kind of go underneath one or two pieces of yarn, that's all you really need, and pull it, and pull. And then we're going to take our thread snips, which for today are becoming yarn snips, and cut that. So there we go. Then we've got to decide what color we want our dinosaur to be. Now, today, I'm going to be doing a light green dinosaur. I got a piece 
you guys probably can't see because my I don't think the picture was out that far, but it's about as long as my arm. Maybe a little longer. I don't want it any longer than that because it'll make us. And I'm gonna pull pretty good length of it through the needle. Not in half, because we're not doubling it, but pretty far down, which makes it even shorter. Now, for every intersection, just like we did down here, we're gonna do a diagonal. I'm not gonna worry about the outsides unless I need to use them to get back to the next line. And I'm gonna start, hmm, I think I'm gonna start at the tail because I feel like once I get up there, it's gonna be really hard to get back without having to thread around something. All right. So I'm gonna just hold this back here Eventually, I will be going over it and it'll get locked in place. Since we started here on the tail and there's nothing above it, I'm going to wrap around the outside edge. diagonal over and into the top one above so my spiky tail over the top of it outside edge of it Keep wrapping the yarn around so that none of the plastic shows. Alright. Now, you guys can see, now I'm at a spot where I do kind of have a diagonal. I can go there and in the next square. And that kind of locks my yarn in. I'm going to come down around to the one underneath of it. And again, this one's going to get wrapped a couple times so that all of that outside edge is covered up. I'm going to come up to the one next to it, and we have a diagonal that we can do down. And I'm going to come into the one that already has, see down here we have, it's got the diagonal greens went up into it. Now I'm going to take the light green up in that same hole and go diagonally up. And do the bottom of the leg. And then the next one, again I'm going to come up and this is the second one that has a green stitch in it, dark green stitch in it, and I'm going to be putting a light green stitch going up to the edge of the tail. And again, that's where it's cut. There's no plastic canvas in there, so I'm just wrapping that edge. And then I'm actually going to go all the way back here to the base of the tail. And you'll see that on the back, all the way back to the base of the tail. And I'm going to do that because I want to do diagonal stitches across that leg. I'm going to go up the hole that already has one light green stitch in it and down the one above. 
above and next to it that has no stitches in it. Up oh, and one that now has one light green stitch. And diagonal over to the edge of the tail. And again, I need to wrap the outside of that tail. So I'm going around the bottom. And around the side. And then on the back side, I'm going all the way back to the beginning of the tail. And this time, this tail one has like two stitches in it. So it might be kind of tough to push your needle through. And, and I'm going to keep doing that all the way through the whole dinosaur. I might come back if there are some hard spots to highlight for you guys, but really we're just covering all of the canvas. Anywhere on your pattern where you can see an intersection of two squares that you can make a diagonal up to the right, you want to make a diagonal up to the right stitch. Now I'm at this spot where I went to the leg and I can go down again. I'm just going to go, you can decide to go down them or go across and travel back on the back side of it. I'm kind of like, since I'm here, I figured I might as well. I'm going to cover those outsides while I go down. There's only two stitches. And then get in this one. It's already got the green stitch going around the edge and I want the light green stitch to go diagonally up into the foot. And I'm going to do one. side again like I said we need to wrap that edge wrap it here and wrap it around again to make sure there's plenty of yarn there yep oh. and so if your tail starts getting stuck just Pull a little bit more of it out of your needle. And I'm going to start doing diagonal. Since I'm going back the other direction, they're down and to the left. So it's the same diagonal as the row beneath it. I'm just traveling in a different direction. Now you can see my leg is done. And I continue with that bottom row that I had left off to do it. Now you can see the tail and both legs are done and we're working our way up the bodies and that's the spot that I missed that we'll go back to. Okay. Now remember how I said that I was only going to bother with this outside edge if I had to travel to get to the end? I have a feeling with this pattern all of our edges are going to be bound by the time we get to the end. If we have to go back and do some we can go back and do some. I'll have to go back and do the piece I forgot. Now be a little bit careful when you're here because this square is only held on by that one little intersection. So we don't want to break that. Go up through the horn. Coming out of this one over here, but I want to go. Hmm. I want my yarn to go this way. I think. We'll, hmm. All right. So that I keep my horn, I'm gonna come up to the 
from the one beneath it. the outside edge, up the one above it, and down the one next to my last stitch. And we're back, you can see, the diagonal, the diagonals. So when I get to here, I'm above where I need to be. I need to take, I need to take this row, because if I keep going on the row I'm at, I'm going to have an empty row. So I'm going to come up, I went down this one, I'm going to come up the row beneath and go back down that one. times where I'm like I am going to squeeze the last bit out of the yarn because all I have to do is cover his back all right our dinosaur is finished uh, I'm gonna go on the back As we noticed when I was stitching, I missed a piece. All right, so all I need is this very little bit. So what I am gonna do, I'm gonna try to push my needle underneath a couple of these. Just so it's already held in place. And I'm gonna hold it with my finger up and around up and I don't want to go under the same pieces I did to secure the front half because I might pull that out. Use my thread snips. And voila! We are done! So the last thing we're gonna do to make these into dino magnets is glue a magnet right back there, which I don't have with me right at the moment, but you guys can stop by the library and come see my magnets in person or stay to the very end of the video and I'll have a finished product for you. Next month is going to be posting on the 1st of December and there's an awful lot of holidays coming up in December. So I think we're going to do something else that's decorative. I'm gonna teach you guys how to make something to decorate the packages that you give, or maybe even the presents that you give. So I'll see you guys in about a month for Stitching Stories. Have a good month, guys. Bye.